Good afternoon to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Thursday, the 28th day of October 2021. Time for the hurricane outlook and discussion. Not much going on in the tropics, of course. Everything just kind of shut down as we started the month. But we do have 94L, which is getting a little bit more interesting, at least maybe to some of you. And then we have some lower 48 weather to talk about, which is definitely a lot more interesting, including a look at an interesting storm that's going to affect the mid-Atlantic that I haven't seen much talk about, but there's some flooding issues to think about for the Chesapeake Bay area, so we'll take a look at that as well on today's update. All right, so let's start off with the National Hurricane Center out here on the map at about 40 north and 60 degrees west. Those are lat long coordinates. That would be invest area 94L, and it's got about a 10% chance of development over the next uh, couple of days and a 30% chance of development over the next five days maybe becoming more subtropical in nature and even on this particular still frame satellite shot yeah there's a little bit more convection or thunderstorm activity associated with it it's still embedded within this larger area of low pressure associated with the huge ocean storm that this is trying to sort of incubate inside of we'll take a close-up of this in just a moment through a nice infrared shot from the weather nerd site First, though, from Tropical Tidbits, here it is on Visible Satellite. Again, there's the larger circulation, but then inside of it, there's the convective process trying to take shape over the marginally warm enough water temperatures. We'll zoom in on that in just a moment and take a closer look at what that's all about. In the meantime, there's the frontal system coming into Florida, kicking off severe weather down there in the warm sector. All along this region, some tornado threats, funnel clouds, you name it, been a very active day in that region, part of this very large mid-latitude storm that's been moving through the nation's midsection, brought all the severe weather over here yesterday, including that EF2 tornado in the Lake Charles area. Boy, those folks down there, I don't want to say poor folks because they're strong, you know, they're resilient. And um, so trying to come up with a description for it, you know, they've endured the endearing folks. How about that? down in the Louisiana area, especially Lake Charles. I mean, think about it. They had Cat 4, Laura, all the hurricanes that were after that last year that were either threatening or close by. They've dealt with some activity this year, of course. Nicholas moving through, uh, and then, you know, weren't real sure what Ida was going to do. Luckily for them in the Lake Charles area, that was more south and east. But nevertheless, an EF2 tornado confirmed by Weather Service personnel Lake Charles yesterday uh, you've definitely endeared a lot. So hang in there, folks. It'll hopefully get better. And look, it is. There's the backside of the storm system, and Lake Charles should have a beautiful sunset tonight. In fact, if you were to fly or drive out of this storm and then just go west from there, it would be literally at least a 1,000 miles of just completely clear skies. Pretty remarkable to see if you think about it. Nothing else coming into the west coast to speak of just way up here in the far Pacific Northwest, a little bit of energy streaming in. All right, looking at a close-up satellite animation here of 94L from the Weather Nerd site. A little bit more in the way of deeper convection. There's one band coming in right there, some thunderstorms on the north side, even some lightning in there. And as you should know, you don't get lightning usually without a convective process to bubble up the atmosphere you get lightning in some other ways too sometimes, but mostly it's through convection or what we call you know the vertical rise of the air there creating these towering thunderstorm towers. That's what we call them, towering. And you get the lightning. And there's a lot of lightning in there. Hundreds of lightning flashes detected by the GOES-16 um, lightning sensor for a simple way to describe it. And so this is trying to sort of isolate itself inside of this larger area of low pressure. The water temperatures through here marginally favorable to give it that energy and latent heat that it needs to develop that convection. So we'll see. Maybe just a little bit uh, enough of a, of a pop there of energy that it becomes subtropical storm Wanda and it uses up the list. Whatever. It's trivial at this point. Interesting too though to see on the broader um, vorticity shot here. And it's a satellite picture. It's just a different method of looking at things. This is indicating spin or vorticity, energy in the atmosphere. It kind of resembles a uh, fried egg. Seriously, there's the yolk, if you will, in the middle. 
and then here's the perimeter of it out along the edges and this is all the other energy and it is sort of around that yoke area trying to consolidate but it's still wrapped up in this larger gyre of uh, counterclockwise rotation and energy but we'll see this is going to be fascinating to watch over about the next day or so as this moves along it is roughly uh, let me back this out so I can get my lat long correct and let's use the color black to highlight it 40 degrees longitude by 60 degrees uh, I'm sorry 40 latitude by 60 degrees longitude is about right there all right so that's where it is there's 26 Celsius so it's just straddling water temperatures that are warm enough by just a little bit there right in this region in here and on the north side too cold just south eh, 79 80 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll see you know it might just do it especially if it can kind of dip south into this 25 26 Celsius area and take advantage of some of that warmer uh, latent heat that's trapped out there in the ocean you know if it does it it does it if not whatever we had a a big enough season as it was with everything that we already had so moving along uh, looking at the lower 48 weather now a pretty active day in the southeast especially in Florida lines and individual cells of storms creating some tornado threats no major problems that I have seen yet nothing showing up on social media in terms of any bad reports you know yesterday it was pretty rough in this area now it has all shifted I mean, that's a pretty good distance that this is all traveled right it's all shifted over to Florida and some of that energy now moving up into my area where the Carolinas could see some severe weather later tonight all this is upper level energy that will eventually translate into this uh, coastal storm that's going to create some flooding problems for our friends up here in the Baltimore area We'll take a look at that in closer detail in a moment as well. First, check this out. Line of storms move through. Light, nice long radar loop courtesy of the Mark Nissenbaum FSU radar site that I like to show from time to time. Anytime you get these individual cells like we see here from the screen grab, this is from our uh, good friend and partner CJ. And he is right there in the Sarasota area. That's where his home and office would be located. Radar scope is fantastic if you don't have it. You can use it on a desktop PC as well as mobile, iPad, iPhone, Android, whatever. A great app, well worth the money that you spend on that. Um, and that's what he's using here to show you the velocities on the right, the reflectivity on the left. And these individual storm cells, those are the ones that can cause problems. I mean, any of these can be problematic, but these are the ones that typically try to become more discreet by themselves and they kind of curl up the way the energy is moving through, lots of wind moving around at the low levels and the mid levels, then you pop up those thunderstorms vertically through that horizontal shear and you create rotation, like a pencil rolling across a table. And if you could bend it, it takes that energy and it focuses it and you get this sort of drill bit tornado like we saw yesterday in the Orange, Texas area. That was a classic example of that. And I think that, as I have said before, the warm Gulf of Mexico, what was not taken out down here by hurricanes and the Caribbean and the Atlantic included, these big mid-latitude storms will take advantage of that warm water that is still there and give us days like this from time to time. And that big coastal storm that we saw yesterday for the Northeast and New England, I think that's going to be something that we have to look at as a problem going into the heart of the winter time and into next spring too we'll, we'll get to that so this is a picture from CJ's place little funnel cloud activity there no confirmed touchdown thank goodness but an active day in Florida nevertheless so I wanted to show you this where is this well this is up in uh, coming out of Sterling Virginia part of the Baltimore Washington weather forecast office the WFO up there let me just back up a second to show you where I'm talking about uh, not often do we mention this area unless it's usually a blizzard or a hurricane problem but this is the headline large if I can hide, let's just do this large and powerful storm transitioning from the central US into the east and so this is important this is why you gotta read this stuff so you can know what's going on all these flood and wind advisories etc for the nation's capital and vicinity around Baltimore Washington the Potomac the basin, the Chesapeake Bay, 
you look at all this like holy mackerel that's a lot going on and it's not even winter right it's not a big winter storm it's just one of these fall storm systems an autumnal storm if you will that is creating these problems here and so back to that infographic and what they call the weather story the hazards going forward here uh, this is a problem high impact it's all red there for a reason coastal flooding late today through Sunday that's several days of that inundation of water on the roads etc two to four feet that's not a typo that's not inches you know you talk about snow eh, two to four inches of snow well that's plowable no big deal two to four feet of inundation that could rival and be higher in some cases than Isabel back in 2003 that should get some attention it really should very interesting there and um, strong gale winds through Friday morning in the evening heavy rain Friday to, through Saturday yee so you know any mountain areas uh, there's some elevation up through there this could be a big impact event and in fact I forgot to bring it up let's just show it to you on the tropical tidbits GFS rendering here uh, and we'll just look at it on the lower 48 or the Kona shot as we move through time this is the storm system right here let's highlight it to where we can see it we we'll use black there it is from 12 Z today which is 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern time move this forward you see what happens that storm system moves through over the weekend and it doesn't look like much but there's enough energy through there that it's going to create some problems you know you see it moving up through there and so pay attention to this this is a big deal from that weather service shot that I was showing you in the Baltimore Washington Chesapeake Bay area pay attention all right all right so one thing I wanted to do uh, just kind of came to mind today just out of nowhere since it's Thursday that old thing that they got on the social medias throwback Thursday I thought you know it's never too late in the year to start something new so every Thursday since I've been doing this for 25 years this year I officially started professionally 25 years ago um, doing this whole intercepting of hurricanes studying hurricanes for a, a career whatever I guess maybe technically it's 26 years because I graduated in 1995 but 96 was the first time and that was Hurricane Bertha right here in Southeast North Carolina that I went out and started to do what I do and that is the first picture ever taken of me doing what I do now uh, I'm trying to get this to let's see there we go I was trying to enlarge the picture it's being annoying let's see if it'll open the image there it is finally uh, so I use this on my Mark Suddeth Productions logo you know like you have 20th Century Fox or Regency Films or whatever um, it's uh, just my little you know doing business as production company that I've got uh, that's the picture and that's what it's from and back then it said amateur storm chaser uh, you know and I was technically I guess but from there everything that we know now grew from that uh, and by the way in that photograph I think I weigh maybe a hundred and forty pounds yeah wouldn't it be nice to still have that physique <laughs> but that's it that's the throwback Thursday um, and I don't look too much different overall that was 25 years ago hard to believe I will be 51 next week so at least that hasn't changed too much maybe it's the hurricanes that give me sort of a little bit of the fountain of youth look you know and it, it works for a lot of us if you know people that do this you go man they can't be that old but I digress thought I'd show you that throwback Thursday we'll see what I'll show you for next week it, it'll, it'll be an interesting potpourri of historic memorabilia from 25 years of doing this work to keep you informed to study hurricanes and other high impact weather events glad to have you along for a lot of that journey some of you have been with me ever since the first days some of you weren't even born anywhere near that time and have come along only recently it's great to have you along for sure all right well that'll that'll do it let's wrap things up get this online for you as always thanks for tuning in 25 years later after starting all of this i am still mark sot of hurricane i'll be back with more for you tomorrow <laughs>